Now Allah says, مَثَلُ نُورِهِ كَمِشْكَعَةٍ The example of His light. Now there's two lights. You remember I told you there are two lights. There's a light outside, the sun, and there's a light inside, which is what? Your eye. Spiritually speaking, there's a light outside. Which is the light outside? Quran, revelation. What's the light inside? The ruh. You with me so far? So the physical is the sun versus the eyes, and the spiritual is the Quran versus the ruh. So light outside and light inside. Now, he's going to give the example of his light. His light is of two kinds, the light he put inside of us and the light that he reveals down. Which is why the Quran calls the Quran light. فَآمِنُوا بِاللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ وَالنُّورِ الَّذِي أَنزَلَ أَنزَلَ in Surah Al-Taghabun Believe in Allah and the Messenger and believe in the light that we sent down. Literally. Allah describes Himself as the light of the skies and the earth. Now light is of two kinds. Light in Islam is of two kinds. There's physical light, like the light of the sun, and there is spiritual light. Like the, you know, the, we said this, this person's heart is full of light. Or the Qur'an is guidance, and the guidance is a kind of light. Like Allah says, Allah brings the uh, people, brings his, his friends out of darkness into what? Into light. So the light is physical and light is also spiritual, right? Angels are made of what kind of light? Photons? Angels are made of spiritual light. That's spiritual light, you understand? Our, our ruh, the ruh that was put inside of us is actually light. But which kind? A spiritual light. So there's physical light and there's spiritual light. When I talk about the light of the sun, what am I talking about? Physical light. Now the beauty of this passage is, Allah is going to give us an example or describe physical light. And if we think about, think about certain things that physical light does, then we will understand certain things that spiritual light does. So actually Allah in this passage is going to make a relationship between physical light and Spiritual light. Now, spiritual light is not something we can understand. It's beyond us. It's it's not. We don't. We've never experienced like physically what it is. We don't know. But physical light, everybody's experienced. Has have we like the daylight outside is physical light. So we'll begin with that. Allah is the light of the skies and the earth. It is as as if to say, without Allah, there would be there would not be any light in the skies and the source of all the light in the skies and the earth, the entire universe, would be completely dark had it not been for Allah. Now, what is Allah's light for this planet, physical light? The sun. The the, Allah's physical lamp for this planet is the sun. Now let's think about the sun for a second. The sun, if you want to be, by the way, how do you appreciate light? What kind of a human being is incapable of appreciating physical light? Very good, a blind person. A blind person. So in order to have vision, you need two things. In order to have vision, you need two things. You need vision, you need, your eyes need to be working, and you need light on the outside. You know for most, in many literatures, including Arabic, the ability to see is to be able to say this person has light in their eyes. The ability to have, there's light in your eyes and there's light outside. You know how lights have a certain shine to them? So it's called the light of the eyes. So some, someone who sees has light inside. And light, the light of the eyes and the light outside. You need both lights in order to be able to see. Is that, is that clear so far? Okay, like for the, for example, one of the words for the eye in Arabic is literally light. The eye is literally light. So there's this light that you have, and there's this light outside of you. Until both of them are there, you're going to be blind. Now, if you have perfectly functioning eyes, but Allah takes the planet sun away, do we still, are we still able to see? No. No, we're not able to see anymore. So the first thing is you cannot see reality around you unless Allah lights up the reality around you. And even if Allah lit up the reality around you, you would know nothing about that unless you had what? This 
over here. You had physicalized yourself. Now let's talk about the spiritual side. This is the physical side. Let's talk about the spiritual side. Spiritually speaking, speaking, Allah gave us, just like you know, the, light, the sun gives us light from above, Allah revealed light from above the Qur'an. Allah revealed light from above. And He revealed this light for human beings. But there are two kinds of human beings. Human beings that are spiritually blind and human beings that spiritually see. Someone who closes up their heart is spiritually blind and so even though there is light all around them, light of the Qur'an, they're not going to be able to see. And their example is the example of a blind person standing in the sunlight saying it's dark. That's the example. So you understand the spiritual side and you understand the physical side. So you with me so far? Okay, let's move on. They say in Arabic, uh, nah, we won't go. It's complicated. Can you handle it? I think you can handle it. Let me ask you. Can you handle it? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Let's try. Ali radiAllahu anhu describes this idea of physical light and spiritual light in a really interesting way. He talked about the human intellect. He said, "Al aqlu wa aqlan matbu'un wa masmu'." Very powerful. He said, the intellect, the mind, is actually two minds. The mind is actually two minds. A mind that is already given to you, a kind of ability to think that was given to you from the moment you were born, and another one that you build over time. What does he mean? He means that the ruh, the ruh is a kind of thinking too. It thinks also. But the ruh was with Allah, and it was fully mature. Unlike a baby who's not fully mature, the ruh that was put inside of us is actually fully mature. It can already speak. Did you know that? The ruh actually spoke with Allah before it even came into our bodies. We've actually, our belief is, every human being has actually had a direct conversation with Allah already. One on one. Alastu bi rabbikum? Qalu. Bala shahidna. Am I not your Lord? He asked, he asked every ruh. Am I not your master? And we all responded, of course you are. We testify. Who testified? Our physical body or the ruh? The ruh testified. Then Allah took one of those ruh and He sent an angel to deliver that ruh into the belly of your mom. So when you came out, you, as a baby, you had a fully formed, mature, what inside you? Ruh inside you. When the adhan is being, you know, recited in the ear of a baby, who's appreciating that adhan? The ruh is. The baby can't understand anything. The body can't understand. The physical mind doesn't understand anything. But the ruh, who was just separated from Allah, because the ruh was in the company of Allah, and now was brought to this earth, makes the baby cry. You know, it's a spiritual cry too. And so you soothe the baby and say, you remind the baby that listen, you're still connected to Allah. And what's the best connection to Allah? A salah. So you call a prayer, the adhan. Okay? So it's a, it's a beautiful thing. By the way, when you call to the prayer, then the next thing happens that you actually pray. You actually pray. The adhan is given when you're born. And the prayer is done when you die. You know the time between the adhan and the prayer is very little? That's actually the description of the time we have between when we're born and when we die. That's why there's no adhan for, or, or iqama for you know, the, the, the janazah prayer. Because that was already done. That was already done when you were born. SubhanAllah. <laughs> you know? So you're here for a very little time. Next time you hear the adhan and wait for the prayer, 10 minutes, I just got 10 minutes, not much time, it's okay. And you, you know, if you go to a masjid and you hear the adhan, you're sitting there and you're waiting for the prayer to start. In between that time, what do you usually do? Something productive. You're like, okay, okay, Allah hasn't called me yet to the iqamah, but I should at least maybe recite some Quran, do something good, etc. Isn't that the idea? Adhan just got called, 
You haven't left this earth yet, do something good in between. But anyway, I digress. He says there are two kinds of minds. The mind that was given to you by Allah, which is what called what? What are we calling it? Ruh. By the way, I just called it something else too. I called it light. I called it what else? Light, because the ruh is a creature of light. We won't go into all of the texts. That's inshallah for a tafsir study. But for now, just oversimplifying. It's also a creature of light. So there's a light inside of you, a spiritual kind of light inside of you. And then there's this brain thing that Allah gave you, which when you were little was this squishy, soft little skull that you're not supposed to touch too much or whatever. And then it forms a little bit and you start saying, Abba. Mama. Hopefully you say Abba first. Like, I think Hosna said Abba first. Everybody else said Mama first. Anyway. <laughs> I'd, be, I'd be working on one of them, like Willie, the Sayaba, Sayaba, Abba, Abba. He goes, Mama. Hi. <laughs> you win this round <laughs> again. <laughs> but anyway. This kid can't speak yet, he's just trying to process sounds. Then eventually starts turning into words, mine, mine, mine. Then eventually sentences, then eventually ideas, then eventually like full grown mature thoughts, ready to go on into a university and do a bachelor's and a master's and a PhD and all of this stuff. Like it becomes more and more advanced, doesn't it? So one, one aspect of our minds is maturing, and the other ma aspect of our mind was always mature. Which side was always mature? The ruh was always mature. Now, let's bring that back. Our vision, our vision helps us think. What you see, you think about what you see. Physical, you know, there's this brain that's thinking, and there's a spiritual side that's thinking. Now he says, وَلَا يَنْفَعُ الْمَسْمُوعُ إِذَا لَمْ يَكُ مَطْبُوعُ كَمَا ضَوْءُ الشَّمْسِ لَا يَنْفَعُ إِذَا ضَوْءُ الْعَيْنِ مَمْنُوعُ Ali رضي الله عنه says, by the way, this intellect, this brain that you develop over time is no good to you. If the brain that you were, the, 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 the mind, the ruh that you were given inside, if you didn't respect it. If you stop respecting the, the, in, the intellect, the ruh that was gifted to you as a baby, and you only think about this brain, even if it grows, it's no good to you. And then he gives the parallel, كَمَا ضَوْءُ الشَّمْسِ لَا يَنْفَعْ إِذَا ضَوْءُ الْعَيْنِ مَمْنُوعَ Just like the light of the sun won't be any good if the light of the eyes is missing. If the light of the eyes is missing. So there's two sides. Our physical brain, our physical mind, our, and then our spiritual heart. Remember the heart and the mind? That's what we're talking about here. Okay, the, when Allah is talking about the heart, it is purified by the ruh that is inside that heart. That's where the ruh lives, it's, in, it's inside the heart. Okay, now, which is why it comes out of the throat, by the way. If it was in the brain, then it doesn't come out of the throat. You see? It comes out from here. Okay? Oh, doesn't say it comes down through the nose or whatever. It, it's pulled out of your throat because it's in the heart. The ruh is in the heart. Anyway, physical light is actually a source of life for this planet. Without physical light, you cannot have life on this planet. It's a cold, dark reality. Without spiritual life, spiritual light, you cannot have spiritual life. Like the other side of it, there are people who walk around, Allah describes that they are, their hearts are dead. Their hearts are dead. Allah describes people have eyes they don't see. لَهُمْ أَعْيُنٌ لَا يُبْصِرُونَ بِهَا They have eyes they don't see. What is He talking about? They have eyes they don't see. They have hearts they don't understand. He's talking about the spiritual problem. You understand that so far? So that's the second. The third, this is really interesting. When Allah, in the daytime, Allah uses His lamp, which is the sun. When the daytime is over, 
What do we have to use? Our own lights, we have to turn our lights on. As a matter of fact, right now the lights are on in here, but if I turn the lights off, would you still be able to see? Why? Because Allah's light is on right now. Let's turn the switch on right now. Imagine all the city's lights are off and it's nighttime, we'll be able to see? No. So when Allah turns His lights on, when Allah, Allah's light comes, then our lights basically become irrelevant. They become irrelevant. They're, they're not necessary anymore. They can add a little bit you know, for your decorative, but they're not a necessity anymore. They're not a necessity. The necessary light is the one that Allah provides. When do our lights, we have to light a fire, do a bar, you know, light a candle, turn switches on and turn bulbs on. When do we have to do that? Nighttime. We have to do that at nighttime. Now think of ancient times. And by the way, by the way, the best efforts we can make to turn our lights on, if all the bulbs in the world were on at the same time, all of them, can it compete with Allah's one lamp? So then the next example we learn is, there is absolutely no comparison between our light and Allah's light. Our light is so limited, so limited. You know when you're landing from a plane? Have you ever landed from a plane in the daytime? And compare that to landing from a plane at nighttime. When you land from a plane in the daytime, what can you see? Everything. And even if you're landing into a city in the nighttime, what can you see? Just dots of light. And how much do they light up? Just a little bit around them. But actually, are, is there water there? Are there mountains there? Are there trees there? Can you tell? No. No. Our light is limited physically, and Allah's light is unlimited. Our light can only light up maybe ourselves a little bit and some people around us. When Allah's light comes, it lights up what? Everything. Does our light give life? Does Allah's light give life? Yes, now let's talk about the spiritual side. This was the physical side. Spiritually speaking, we have certain ideas. We have our brain, we have certain ideas. And they may be good. But how good your ideas are at the end of the day are still going to be limited. Just like the light we produce is what? Limited. And what we can see with this light that Allah has given us, this light of our eyes, what we can see is actually limited. Why is it limited? Because it's just ours, weak bulbs. But when Allah brings His light, when Allah reveals, then sometimes we learn that our light, what, was, what, what, we, didn't, what we couldn't have known ourselves, it, He completes it. He completes it. Now we have the full picture. Now it's like, whoa, now I can truly see. You go to a place, you visit it at night time, they're driving you to the hotel or where you're gonna stay, and you're trying to look really hard outside. Like my family, we were invited to the Muslim community that lives in Bermuda. So we went there. We landed in the evening, like Maghrib time or so, and it looked really beautiful because it's an island, you know. And we were looking over at the ocean, but by the time they came to pick us up, it was, it was really dark. And we're driving and we're, everybody's trying to find the ocean. All the kids are like... All they see is like trees and dark streets and they don't see anything. Like we did not appreciate where we were at night at all. Then day breaks. And you look out the window and you're like, what? That's what we drove. And then we're driving and we're like, was this the, dro the, the, the road we took last night? Yep, that was the road. Oh my God, this is so beautiful. This, I completely did not appreciate what this was until until Allah's light. So until Allah's light comes, you may have some appreciation of reality around you, spiritually speaking. You may know some things about what's going on around you, but when Allah reveals His light, 
your appreciation of reality around you changes like night and day. Like night and day, bro. Totally different. The world becomes a different place. All of your experiences become different. Just like the experience between night and day. You with me so far? Okay, now let's take next steps. Now Allah says, مَثَلُ نُورِهِ كَمِشْكَاتِ The example of His light. Now there's two lights. You remember I told you there are two lights. There's a light outside, the sun, and there's a light inside, which is what? Your eye. Spiritually speaking, there's a light outside. Which is the light outside? Quran, revelation. What's the light inside? The ruh. You with me so far? So the physical is the sun versus the eyes, and the spiritual is the Quran versus the ruh. So light outside and light inside. Now, he's going to give the example of his light. His light is of two kinds. The light he put inside of us and the light that he reveals down. Which is why the Quran calls the Quran light. فَآمِنُوا بِاللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ وَالنُّورِ الَّذِي أَنزَلَا أَنزَلَا in Surah Al-Taghabun Believe in Allah and the Messenger and believe in the light that we sent down. Literally. 